Hi, I am Jennifer Purcell, and welcome to my podcast, Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge, where we will discuss, discover, and learn more about the challenges and triumphs of those with NLD and other learning challenges. I do have a website for this podcast, and it is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter account for the podcast. They are all under the same name, which is Living with NLD. I also have a YouTube channel for the podcast, which can be found by Googling the title of the podcast, which is Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge. I would like to tell you about a nonprofit that I use for my research for this podcast. It is called The NBLD Project, and I use their blog for my research. They are a nonprofit that is based in New York and is trying to get NVLD back on the DSM, and they provide many resources for people with NVLD on their website. I'll provide you with the website for them in the podcast description. All proceeds from the ads on this podcast will be donated towards the NVLD project. Please feel free to explore the other topics on the podcast, and hopefully you will learn something new from them. I hope you enjoy today's episodes. Also, I have podcast swag on Markful. I believe that's the name of the website I'm using now. I also have it on Redbubble. I'll give you the links in the description for this podcast episode, and you can take a look Both websites have different prices and they have some discounts going on also. And um, one has t-shirts and some apparel that you can buy and some drinkware. So see which one you would like better. Good morning. So today's episode will be about chronic pain, hypermobility, and neurodivergence. Did you know that there is a link between neurodivergence and being hyperbolic? The first article is titled Link Between Neurodiversity and Hypermobility from Student Placement with written in March of 2023. Quote, neurodivergent people are two times more likely to have hypermobile joints than neurotypical people. Um... They also found that hypermobility faced by neurodivergent people is a meditating factor, sorry, mediating factor for associated symptoms of dysotonium and pain. Um, I didn't know that neurodivergence were, that there was a connection between neurodivergence and hypermobility until um, I was talking to one of my friends about it. And, um, she noticed that I was able to do some things that some people can't like, um, I can touch my thumb to my wrist on my right hand, but not on my left hand, which is interesting, bending it backwards. Um, and, uh. I'm pretty flexible too. So I think that was part of it. Um, the second article provides a definition of hypermobility. Hypermobility is also linked to stress sensitive psychomechanic disorders, including irritable bowel syndrome, fibromyalgia, and chronic fatigue, and is also associated with hypertense, hypersensitivity to no, noticeptive stimuli. So I'm trying to see if there's a connection between hypermobility and chronic pain in this because I have both and I am also neurodivergent. So I thought that could be an interesting episode topic. And um, there's not that much out there on it, but what I did find was pretty interesting in terms of connecting the two to each other and seeing how they're related and why they're related as well. Um, 
And uh, if my voice sounds kind of weird, that's because I'm getting over a cold. So bear with me with this, please. Um, so the third article is a video on a study that the University of Suffolk in UK did on hypermobility and neurodivergence. I'll include the link for that video. The last article is the link between neurodiversity plus chronic pain written by Dana Salman. Neurodiversity and pain. Neurodivergent women are more likely to present with chronic pain issues. A study followed 100 women with a neurospectrum diagnosis over the course of 16 to 19 years to investigate quality of life and pain. 76% of the women reported chronic pain. Lower back pain was the most common issue impacting 50% of the sample size and the entire 30% reported abdominal pain. But when looking at the group with chronic pain, the number increased to 50%. Both of these frequently reported conditions are highly correlated with pelvic floor dysfunction. Um, Another recent study looked at the link between hypermobility, automobility, motic dysfunction and pain in neurodiverse individuals. The result strongly suggested that neurodivergent people are more likely to experience pain due to joint hypermobility. And um, I think this is kind of interesting because I think that for me, with my migraines, which actually have been getting a little bit better in terms of the pain intensity since I've been on Botox and VEPT, which is an IV, excuse me. Um, and I've also been taking a migraine relief tea. Uh, I don't drink it as a tea, but I grind it up in a powder form and put it in capsules. Um, and I take about four of those a day and that seems to help. I'm also on Benadryl for the biometric mother triggers and um, Mematitin and Rapamil. Um, not going to mention the milligrams of all that because it's different for each patient uh, in terms of what is helpful. Um, and I also usually try to take a hot shower at night before I go to bed because that helps with my migraines and um, a little bit of caffeine helps sometimes um, peppermint tea can help and peppermint oil um, ginger can help and what else can help sometimes lavender oil um Oh, and if you, you if cold isn't a trigger for you like it is for me, you can use ice packs, or I usually use heat packs instead because that helps rather than the cold because that's a trigger for me. And um, usually eating helps too because if you don't eat, then that makes the migraines worse. Um, and um let's see what else helps um i think i'm gonna go on to a different topic actually because that one was really short so i'm gonna combine this with the new name for mbld which is development visual spatial disorder or dvsd is that acronym So have you ever heard of why NBLD isn't in the DSM and why is the name changing to developmental visual spatial disorder? Why isn't there one agreed upon definition for NBLD or DVSD? We'll be exploring these topics today. Here's a definition of the DSM from the online therapy company, BetterHelp. What is the DSM? The DSM is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or DSM for short, is a tool mental health professionals use to diagnose and clarify mental illnesses. 
the current definition of a mental illness by the American Psychiatric Association, APA, is a mental health condition involving changes in motion, thinking, or behavior, a combination of these. The most recent edition of the DSM covers nearly 300 medical conditions, including depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, acute stress disorder, borderline personality disorder, somatic symptom disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, prolonged grief disorder, neurodivergent development, sorry, neurodevelopmental disorders and disorders can be adverse effects of medication. And the second article from Mighty Blog by Keaton describes their challenges with MVLD at age 26. Quote, I have a learning disability, a few actually, including one you may have never heard of. It is recognized by most neuropsychologists, and yet it is controversial because it does not exist in the DSM-5, Nonverbal Learning Disability, and VLD or NLD. The name is often misleading to the average person. One may see the word nonverbal and assume it means that the individual does not speak. This is often quite to the contrary. Those with NVLD can be quite qu- quite talkative. The reason behind the name is p- because ne- NVLDers struggle with understanding nonverbal communication, a hallmark of the learning disability. But who am I to say all of this? I have learned a lot about nonverbal learning disability this past year because I was diagnosed with this condition not so long ago as a 26-year-old. I have joined Facebook groups and read what I can find online, receiving most of my information firsthand from others who share a diagnosis of NVLD with me. Unfortunately, there is not enough information out there about NVLD, and that is why I have decided to write this. So I think that's good that she was writing that and that she is saying what her issues are and um or maybe it's a he i'm not sure because it's kaden um and they were um so basically the name is being changed to developmental visual spatial disorder because of trying to put into the dsm with a name that is makes more sense for the symptoms and can be agreed upon with the definition by professionals. And so that it's easier for people to um, diagnose it. And they also wanted to, um, when the NVLD project was putting it into the DSM for submitting that to review it and being in there as a diagnosis, they needed some um, evidence and uh, lab research and experiments. So they decided, well, it'd be better to change the name because the name's kind of misleading and needing to do that so that um, they can do that and be able to um, collect some data and be able to describe what DVSD is or MVLD is. So Caden's challenges are in the areas of coordination, visual, spatial, processing, mental health, social challenges, and executive functioning. I have issues in those areas too. Like I find it difficult to drive to the due to the multitasking, slower reflexes, and visual spatial processing. Balancing my budget or thinking of an abstract big picture things are challenging too. Social challenges would be reading facial expressions and understanding tone of voice and forms of communication that aren't in person like texting or emails. I have executive function difficulties too because of trying to plan ahead for the future with chronic pain condition I have and NVLD a little too. The second article is from 
Rom planet and is and this quote is from a male in Poland posting in this blog about NLD and why the name should be changed. I think the name of the non rebelling disorder has to be changed in a serious con and complex developmental dis- disability, which for me exists as a spectrum like classic autism should be put in the DSM and ICD, but obviously not as learning disorder specific developmental disorder, but as a persuasive developmental disability, which makes sense because it, like I was saying, the name is misleading and doesn't really help you define it. Um, the next article is from the NVLD project is titled NVLD. What is it and why it is not in the DSM by Benjamin Meyer from February 26 of 2020. Benjamin is a bilingual psycho psychotherapist and an executive functioning coach who specializes in working with young adults with NVLD and it, it, he was inspired by his personal experience to help those um, he works with to transition to the professional and social demands of adult life. He believes that each person is unique and that we are more than just our labels and diagnosis. And he is a project, project social ambassador for the NBLD project. Quote, there exists some controversy regarding a diagnosis called NVLD nonverbal learning disorder. It is defined as a set of strengths in verbal memory and vocabulary accompanied by visual, spatial, fine motor, and social difficulties that include decoding body language and understanding interference and humor. Many with NVLD also face challenges adapting to frequent changes and novel situations and struggle to see the big picture, focusing on the details of a story or essay instead of the main theme. Given that so many people have been classified as having NVLD, why is it not in the DSM? One possible answer was offered by the Columbia Psychiatric Social Work Professor, Dr. Prudence Fisher, who acknowledged that there is no agreed one upon definition of NVLD other than that it involves visual spatial deficits. It is also the case that there is a considerable variance with NVLD population regarding how individual strengths and weaknesses manifest with some individuals exhibiting strong social skills and others struggling with handwriting, for example. However, there is significant evidence that NVLD does exist as a neurological profile, which I will summarize below as well as speak to the effort that to include in the DSM. In addition, NVLD is easily mixed recognized as other disorders such as autism spectrum disorder, which also includes social difficulties. However, there are some core differences between NVLD and ASD, including the fact that the former does not include deficits in verbal expression and involves motor difficulties and challenges reading body language rather than stereotyped or repetitive mo- movements. Some children and families with NVLD complain that the services have received have been geared towards those on the spectrum rather and therefore did not effectively address their unique needs. Therefore, part of the effort to have NVLD included in the DSM-5 is to help individuals with it to access appropriate care, both in terms of providers, awareness, and insurance reimbursement. The last article is titled A New Diagnosis for the DSM by Prudence W. Fisher, who has a PhD, and Amy Barlogos, who has a PhD from Beyond Disability. Examining Nonverbal Learning Disorder posted uh, August 28th, 2017, reviewed by Jessica Kreitzer. We'll discuss the steps the 
and BLD project needs to take to submit NLD as a diagnosis that belongs in the DSM. Quote, adding a new DS diagnosis to the DSM is not easy, is no easy task. It is a multi-step iterative process involving expert review and public comment. It starts with the presentation, sorry, preparation of a detailed proposal for, for consideration by the DSM steering committee. And then the necessary first step is to clearly specific, specify the criteria for assessing the disorder and DSM style. The proposal must then justify the addition of the disorder by laying out the supporting information evidence for each of the following. One, the condition meets the DSM definition of mental disorder. Two, clinical utility and diagnostic criteria can be read reliably used by clinicians. Three, there is substantial clinical value in adding the disorder that is, it will help people that are in need and currently not being identified or properly treated. Four, addition of the disorder will not cause harm, a positive benefit to harm ratio. Five, the disorder has validity, antecedent, concurrent, and predictive. Six, the disorder is distinctive, distinct to other DSM diagnoses, is not better conceptualized as a subtype of an existing disorder. Close quote. So that makes sense because um, that basically gives you step by step of how to get into the DSM and what you need to do. Um, and what the NBLD project is doing. And I want to share some songs that I think go with this episode. One is called Walking Miracles by Matthew West. And the other one by the same author, I mean, same artist is Do Something. Walking Miracles is about the physical disabilities like cancer, being paralyzed or not being able to talk, overcoming their challenges and defining all the obstacles the doctors discussed with them and their family members. I look at it through the lens of someone with a learning difference being able to overcome the challenges of visual spatial processing, executive functioning skills, social communication deficits, or understanding abstract and big picture ideas. The second psalm by Matthew West is titled, do something and is about the suffering and challenges people in the world experience and how God picked individuals on earth to do something about them rather than being bystanders and do nothing or thinking God, someone else will do something. I don't really believe in God picking individuals literally, but I do believe in God or spirit showing us or what our calling is. And I believe mine is to sh help show awareness on individuals of lives of neurodivergence and the challenges we have and to be the voice for those who don't have one or aren't sure how to speak up, advocate and support themselves. There should be no shame or guilt in being able to do this I mean, and not being able to do so. I hope that this episode will help you feel empowered to work on your challenges, understand why NLD should be on the DSM and the name is being changed to development of visual spatial disorder. And I will include the links for this episode and for the previous topic, which was hypermobility, chronic pain, and NLD. And this one was the name change being to from NLD to developmental, developmental visual spatial disorder. Sorry, that's a mouthful. And why it's not in the DSM, why it should be. I also want to take time to let you know that this podcast is sponsored by Spotify. And if you would like to support this podcast and keep it going, you can donate through Spotify, or you can donate through Patreon, which is also a sponsor for podcasts. And on Patreon, I started to put different material up there. For $5, you can get some episodes that don't have any ads to it. And for $10, you can get the same episode along with the transcript for it. 
at least the link to it uh, that is on my website. And you can listen to the episode while you read along to it. And also BetterHelp sponsors this podcast and BetterHelp is an online therapy program that has helped millions of people get out of um, whatever situation that they may be in that it requires therapy, whether that's depression or anxiety, or maybe they're going through a difficult period with um, being a healing from something in their past that happened. I know for myself, I've been in eight years of therapy um, with a different online program than better help, but I can speak in general terms that therapy is very effective and can help you change your life around for the better. It certainly has done that for mine. And I provide all the links for these sponsorships in the podcast description if you want to check them out. Thank you. And today I am very excited to announce that BetterHelp is now sponsoring this podcast. I have had seven years of therapy, so I know it can help change your life if you not only let it, but work on the personal goals that you set with your therapist. Without a healthy mind, Being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy works. But what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships at work, not dealing well with stress. Whatever you need, it's Time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are the greatest asset. And special offering to listeners of Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge You can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash, I'll put in the link in the podcast description for you. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-E-P. Thanks again to BetterHelp for supporting, I mean, sponsoring this podcast. As I wrap up, there are some things I would like to share with you. I do have a website for this podcast. It is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook and Instagram page for this podcast. It is called Living with NLD. I will include the links for those in the description. In conclusion, I would like to hear from my audience. If you know individuals with NLD that I could interview for this podcast, please email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com. What are you interested in learning about NLD? I know I'm not an expert, but I do know I have the living experience of having it. I would like you to practice journaling about your gifts and differences. Also see if there is a way that you can make that difference become easier for you to do than originally it was. Thank you for listening today, and please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Thank you. Bye.